Did you know that around 69% of people across the world are afraid of death? It's a natural fear. By definition, death happens when the brain completely and permanently stops working. In other words, being brain dead means truly being gone. But what if we could somehow bring the brain back to life? Could that mean immortality is possible? The human brain is incredibly fragile. Even the slightest touch can destroy thousands of neurons. And right now, science hasn't found a way to reconnect the brain's nerves to a different body or system. Years ago, an American neurosurgeon named Dr. Robert White tried something bold. He transplanted a monkey's head onto another monkey's body. Sadly, the monkey only survived for eight days. The experiment didn't succeed, but don't lose hope just yet. Some scientists believe that quantum mechanics, the mysterious science of the tiniest particles, might help us reach immortality by exploring the power of consciousness. What, do you think, is living forever something we should even try to achieve? What exactly is consciousness? It begins in our brain and is what allows us to see, feel, and understand the world in our own unique way. You can think of it like the brain's operating system. It not only helps us make sense of life but also shapes our personality and identity. Now imagine if we could copy someone's consciousness. That would mean everything about them. How they think, their memories, favorite things, even how they sleep, could be saved and kept forever. This idea is called digital immortality and it suggests that a person could live on in digital form long after their body is gone. If you had the chance, would you want your consciousness to live forever? Is there any proof from physics that supports the idea of consciousness beyond the brain? Some scientists think so, and they've turned to black holes and quantum theory for answers. To explore this idea, researchers often study the singularity inside black holes, a point where the laws of physics break down but the connection between consciousness and the universe actually goes back even further. In 1924, a scientist named Louis de Broglie made an incredible discovery. Light isn't just a wave or a particle, it's both at the same time. Even more fascinating, he suggested that everything in the universe, including us humans, has the same dual nature. This means the universe doesn't work in a predictable, fixed way like classical physics once believed. Instead, it operates more like a system of probabilities, where things could happen in many different ways. This shook the world of science. Then in 1927, physicist Werner Heisenberg introduced the uncertainty principle. He said it's impossible to measure both the exact position and speed of a tiny particle at the same time. Not everyone agreed with this strange idea at first, but well-known scientists like Niels Bohr and Max Planck supported it. Bohr even ran the famous double-slit experiment and the results were shocking. It showed that the act of observing something can actually change how it behaves. This opened up a whole new way of thinking about reality, and maybe even consciousness itself. Do you think our thoughts and awareness are just brain activity, or could there be something deeper connected to the universe? One of the most mind-blowing experiments in physics is the double-slit experiment, which shows how just observing something can actually change reality. When physicist Niels Bohr fired high-speed electrons through two tiny slits, something strange happened. Instead of acting like solid particles, the electrons created wave-like patterns on a screen, similar to ripples in water. This showed that they were behaving like waves, but when scientists placed a detector to observe which slit the electrons went through, the pattern completely changed. Suddenly, the electrons acted like individual particles, not waves. In simple terms, just watching the electrons made them change their behavior. This effect is known as the collapse of the wave function, when something that behaves like a wave instantly turns into a particle once it's observed. This led to a deep idea, that conscious observation can influence physical reality. In 1932, physicist John von Neumann took this even further. He said that whenever a conscious observer interacts with a quantum system, it actually causes that system to change. So here's the big question. Could our minds be more powerful than we think, maybe even capable of shaping the world around us? As scientists began to notice how consciousness seemed to affect quantum systems, more big names in physics started to explore the idea, including the famous quantum physicist Erwin Schrödinger. Schrödinger is best known for developing the wave equation, which describes how tiny particles behave. What made his discovery so fascinating was that it didn't just show particles going left or right. It revealed a third strange possibility, 
that a particle could exist in both directions at the same time. This is known as superposition. Later on, Schrodinger wrote a book called Mind and Matter, where he made a bold argument that consciousness isn't something mystical or spiritual. Instead, he believed it's a quantum process that happens inside the neurons of our brain. This idea was revolutionary. It suggested that consciousness could be explained by science, not just by philosophy or religion. As a result, more scientists started to seriously consider the possibility that the mind might be deeply connected to the quantum world. If consciousness really is a quantum phenomenon, could that mean our minds are linked to the universe in ways we've only just begun to understand? Physicist Roger Penrose took the idea of quantum consciousness a step further. In his 1989 book The Emperor's New Mind, he suggested something radical, that our brain itself is a quantum system, constantly existing in a state of superposition, just like in the double-slit experiment, where particles exist in multiple states until observed. Penrose believed the same happens in our brain. According to him, when we have a specific thought, the brain's wave function collapses into one state, and that's when consciousness is created. Here's a simple example. If I say the word apple, your brain instantly filters through countless possibilities and locks onto one image. But what you see might be very different from what someone else imagines. You might picture a shiny red fruit. Someone else might think of a green apple, a tech brand, or even just the letters of the word. Why is that? Because every brain is unique. While 98% of our DNA is the same, it's the remaining 2% that makes us different, especially in how our neurons work and respond. This small difference shapes our thoughts, memories, and how we experience the world. So according to Penrose, our brain exists in infinite possible states, and consciousness happens when just one of those possibilities becomes reality. What do you imagine when you hear the word apple? Let's see how different our minds really are. But there was a problem with Roger Penrose's theory. According to quantum physics, objects that exist in superposition must be incredibly small, like electrons or photons. But neurons in the human brain are far too large to behave this way. There was no known structure inside the brain that could create or sustain quantum-level consciousness. So, for nearly ten years, Penrose's theory remained stuck. An interesting idea, but without solid evidence. Then came a surprising breakthrough. An anesthesiologist named Stuart Hameroff read Penrose's book and reached out to him. He suggested that maybe it's not the neurons themselves but the tiny microtubules inside the neurons that could be responsible. Microtubules are microscopic structures that help transport chemicals, like neurotransmitters, throughout the brain. And interestingly, they can send these signals in multiple directions at once, just like how particles behave in quantum systems. Hameroff proposed that when we're not focused, these microtubules carry endless possibilities. But the moment we focus on a specific thought, all those possibilities collapse into one path, and the brain forms a conscious experience. It was a brilliant explanation that gave Penrose's theory new life. Still, many scientists and philosophers weren't convinced. They argued that consciousness isn't physical, so it can't be studied through quantum physics. Even today this debate continues, but what do you think? Could consciousness really be hidden deep inside the quantum world? Or is it something beyond science altogether? Enter Elon Musk, who has a very different take on consciousness. He believes that consciousness is physical, something that can be measured, studied, and even copied. His company Neuralink is working on making this a reality. They've developed a tiny chip with 372 electrodes that can be implanted directly into the brain to connect it with a computer. They've already tested it on a monkey, and the results are incredible. In a video, the monkey uses only its brain to play a video game controlling everything without touching anything. If Neuralink can eventually track even half of a person's brain signals, it could be a huge breakthrough in understanding how consciousness works. So what do you think? Could technology like Neuralink help us unlock the mysteries of the mind? Or is there a limit to what machines can understand? If the theories of Penrose and Hameroff are right, then Neuralink could help us achieve something amazing. Digital immortality. Here's how it could work in two simple steps. First, before someone dies, their brain's consciousness would be scanned and copied. Then this copy could be uploaded into a humanoid robot, a computer, or another host body. This means a person's consciousness could be preserved forever, ready to live again whenever needed. But it doesn't stop there. 
Imagine instantly uploading new skills like singing or dancing, or even using this technology to stay one step ahead of AI by merging AI's data with our own consciousness. Elon Musk warns that AI could one day become conscious itself and might even become a threat to humanity if we're not careful. What do you think? Would you want to live forever in a digital form? If you learned something new about consciousness today, and you believe that science might soon be able to explain and even create it, then don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Beyond the Body, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next mind-blowing video. What topic about the mind or universe would you like us to explore next? Let us know in the comments.